Hello, and welcome to the first concert of our full official season, 53, our play series. We're very excited about this one. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun things for you tonight and throughout the rest of the season. My name is Stephanie Hellickson. I'm the executive director here at the Ballas Symphony Association. And I'm here to kind of introduce a few things and give us some roadmap for a couple days. Um, if you haven't already, our program is virtual this time. Uh, the programs are in Chicago. They will be here in December, but they're not here tonight. So, uh, if you can, use your phone, scan the QR codes that you're seeing up here. There's also one in the lobby if you missed it up there. That will give you all the information on all of our musicians, everybody who's up here on the stage, as well as all of our sponsors, who they are and what they're supporting here. Um, I would like to start off here with thanking this wonderful group of musicians. These are all volunteer musicians. They spend dozens of hours practicing at home and coming to rehearsals uh, to make these concerts possible for us to enjoy here tonight. So join me in thanking all of you. We have a few new board members since the last time we were here in the pavilion. We have three new board members since April. We have Nona Mayberry, who has stepped in as our treasurer. Uh, we have Ann Harper, who has stepped up as a board member at large, who's helping us with some ticketing. And then we have Glenn Justice, our newest board member, who's here tonight. Glenn, are you here somewhere? There he is. <laughs> he is our newest board member. They help us by doing a lot of organization and helping us with things like what you saw out in the lobby and kind of doing all those things that we can't do as musicians from the stage. So we're very grateful for them. I'd also like to thank our concert partner for tonight. Our concert partner for tonight is Montrose Emergency Physicians. This is Doug Borgo, Dr. Doug Borgo, um, who his daughter played with us for several years as a violist. She's now off at college, but we're very excited to have them partnered with us to sponsor this one, this particular concert. So give Doug uh, and the Montrose Emergency Physicians a hand. We also have two season partners this year. We are lucky to have two, which is fantastic. Um, our first one is Cimarron Wealth Management. We're very grateful to them and all of the support that they've given us over the years. And the David Mize family has also stepped up this year as a full season partner. We're excited about that. That helps us pay for conductor salaries and some of those bigger, bigger line items that are difficult to cover just with donations and ticket sales. So thank you to those two for making this all possible. And lastly, I want to thank you for being here. This is not particularly fun for us to play in an empty room. So it's really a whole lot more fun when you are here, when you're participating with us, when you're laughing along with, with us, when you're having a really good time. So we're very excited to share this with you. We practice all these hours and make this happen so that we can share this with you. We're very excited to do that today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting classical music in Montrose. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome our artistic director and choral, our orchestral conductor, Troy Graber, to the stage.
So up next is our, um, really one of the things that I've always wanted to do with an orchestra, and that is to play um, the, the soundtracks from some of my favorite video games. Um, for most of you that don't, don't know, I am a gamer. I have a serious addiction problem with gaming. I spend every morning with my cup of coffee and my computer, and I play video games. It's what I do. It's part of my culture. So, I've played all these games that we're going to play the soundtracks from, but the interesting thing about music of video games is you don't really notice it in the game because you're so involved in the performance of the game and as you're playing, but all of a sudden it sort of permeates into your, into your ear and you'll hear these themes in other places. And many times these composers are taking information from classical composers and then sort of turning it into a different way of, of listening. So, video game music is a, is a genre. Um, Anwen Borgo, uh, Dr. Borgo's daughter, is currently studying uh, composition, uh, commercial composition, which is movie and video game performances, so I think it's really neat that he is sponsoring that, uh, sponsoring our concert this evening. So, we're gonna start with Video Games Live. This has themes from Halo, from Civilization, from Kingdom Hearts, um, and what I've done is I've edited the cutscenes or the opening scenes um, from each of these games into a video that we're going to play along with. Thank you. 
So it is the Beethoven of our time. When you start listening to the way that they're using the music in the background, um, and it's like elevator for elevator music for gamers. Um, it just keeps us interested. And, and what happens is these soundtracks in the games are one big kind of electronic. But when you go hear the soundtracks that are recorded by LA, London, you get these beautiful soundtracks of all this wonderful classical music being played by a classical symphony orchestra. But it's game. So, it's kind of fun. Uh, we're going to do one more from Video Games Live. Video Games Live started producing these concerts uh, for the express purpose of playing this modern music in a classical setting. So we're going to do one more. It's called uh, Advent Rising. It's called The Bounty Hunter from Advent Rising. And Advent Rising is a terrible game. Uh, it was terribly unsuccessful. Um, it's really cool new age art. Um, it was trying to compete with Halo and didn't work. Um, and so it failed miserably within about a year of its production, but the soundtrack is incredible for it. Now, I don't have any video for it because I deleted the game a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but most of the game footage that I had is, is actually sort of Halo-esque and very violent. I didn't want to put that up there. Uh, but the music is excellent. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. This is Bounty Hunter from Advent Rising. Thank you. 
Okay, so all the uh, video game music is a, is a different style. We're going to move into some of the classics now. Um, and this is where Warner Brothers really made their, made their mark. But before we do that, I have to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to recognize Esther for her solo at the beginning of the thing. I forgot to have the first stand up. <laughs> And then I want to talk about Phil the Chub. Did you guys all get to meet Phil? Yes. Phil the Chub. Here comes Phil. So this year we've added Phil to our orchestra. And Phil is our, our, our little campaign here. This is, we needed a, a donation box. I was like, okay, we need a box. So I had this chub. This was my mother's chub. And she gave it to me years ago when I was teaching. And I had kids use it until it was no longer repairable. <laughs> uh, and then it's just been sitting on a shelf. So I thought, well, why not? Let's have this, let's have this uh, campaign to fill, fill, <laughs> fill, fill. You get the point. Um, and my lovely wife and her art class uh, at Palisade High School painted it for us, and we got this campaign started. So Phil is going to be at every concert. And the purpose behind Phil is really to support these musicians on stage. Whether we need to get some new stands, new chairs, we need to get some music, we need to get things that specifically help the musicians who are volunteering their time. Remember, think about the music you just heard. The work that they're doing is unpaid. They are volunteer musicians, and this is a rare and amazing thing that we have here that does not exist in a lot of places. And so, hats off to all of you for your hard work. And your so, we're going to use the funds that come through this cello campaign to fill fill um, to help support these musicians in what we're doing and, and allow them to have uh, what what we need to make things work up here. So, um, please take a minute and and talk to Phil on the way out. Um, and we will, at the end of the season, we're going to do this all season between choir and orchestra and make sure everything's there. And we are going to do, at the end, we're going to count it all up. We're going to do a contest, and you're going to guess how much is in Phil. And we're going to give away a, a set of season tickets for the winner of that guessing competition. So it's like, you know, Phil the Joe's in, in school and you want to see how much is in there. So thank you, Phil. And thank you, Kat. You for bringing Phil out. All right, on to the show. Um, I wanted to do, on this performance, I wanted to do The Bunny of Seville. And it is one of the most iconic pieces ever done by Warner Brothers. Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, trapped on stage in the Barber of Seville opera. Um, we can't show it. It's copyrighted. <laughs> and it's, I tried and tried and tried. I'm like, how many ways can I do this? Can I make our own? It's not going to happen. So you have to put it in your head. And then I encourage you to go home at some point over the next, after this performance, and go listen to and watch that cartoon, because it is really the iconic. It actually won an Academy Award for Best Short Film in 1948, uh, and it was really Warner Brothers' sort of crowning jewel of this process. So if you don't know the story, it's an opera, and as in all opera, there is drama. So we have Figaro, who is the barber of Seville, and then we have Barto Don Bartolo is one of the love interests. And Count Almaviva is sort of the mentor, caretaker of Rosina. And Rosina is, is the damsel in distress. And then we have, uh, I always forget the last guy's name. Uh, give me notes. Felt really smart there for a minute, trying to remember. <laughs> Uh, and that went away. Um, uh, actually, he's not in this scene. Never mind. <laughs> so Almaviva and Bartolo are are vying for Rosina, and um, Figaro is in the mix, trying to confuse everyone. So throughout, you're going to hear a bassoon solo, you're going to hear a horn solo, you're going to hear flute solos. These are Figaro interjecting himself into the conversation and trying to get things to happen in the show. Uh, so this is the overture. This is sort of the whole story in one. And what was so creative about Warner Brothers' presentation is that they did the entire opera in a four and a half minute cartoon. 
and it was real quick, and they basically just played the overture. So we're going to play the whole overture for you, and you can imagine Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny.
there's a little opera for you. Go home and watch the video. It's, it's spectacular. All right, next is our, is our massive project. I've wanted to do this forever, and this was the perfect opportunity. Um, who remembers Tom and Jerry? Hey, Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry is really fun because Jerry was really cool and Tom was just kind of a nerd. And so Tom is a concert pianist and he comes out to play at Hungarian Rhapsody number two by list. And Jerry has other plans. Jerry's having a nap and during the concert and he's living inside the concert piano. So I found the the original video of this, and we have cut up our copy of the list to exactly match the video. And this has been a real project because when they did this, it's it's sometimes hard to tell. I'm not sure if the animation came first or the soloist came first, but the piano soloist and orchestra, along with this, is perfectly animated with the music. And I had to go through and figure out which three measures they didn't play, and what 12 measures I had to put in twice, and how many times we had to go back. So about the first four minutes of this is with the video, and then the video is gonna fade out, and we're gonna play the rest of it as written, as this intended. So enjoy the art version of the Hungarian Rhapsody number two, The Cat Concerto.
Thank you so much for being here. We're going to play one more tune for you. 